why you shouldn't own individual stocks. If there's ever a chart that shows you uh, <laughs> this is it. If you follow Meb Faber, uh, he talks about this on occasion. I, I don't listen that much anymore, but I like Meb. I just I have so many podcasts on this little phone of mine that I just don't uh, follow his. But uh, you know, I, either way. But um, when I used to be driving back and forth a lot, I'd listen to Meb all the time, and he talks about if it wasn't for a couple of stocks, the S and P five hundred as a whole uh, would not have done nearly uh, the American stock market what the uh, what we got. And so here's uh, my man, Ra uh, who is this? Uh, Jeffrey Gunlack. What page is this here? This is uh, page 25. And uh, I'll put a link in the show notes. Um, this is his uh, Superman. Uh, I'm not even sure what the title of the presentation is. I didn't watch it. I just uh, saw the link to it. And I, and I just want to kind of, you can, I'll put a link. You can watch and read all this stuff. It's interesting. Um, uh, U.S. equity prices versus the rest of the world. You can see we're much higher uh, than the rest of the world. I'm not going to dive into that because I definitely want to dive into this. All right, so this right here. The uh, the stocks, the six of the 500 S&P 500, six of the 500 of the S&P 500 represent, if 100 is our starting point in 2015, they uh, tripled. They went from 100 to 200 to 300, actually even more than tripled. The rest of the S&P 500, though, is only up about 10%. All right? So the S&P 500 as a whole, minus those six stocks, Facebook, Apple, uh, Alphabet, it used to be Fang, Facebook, Al Alpha, Apple, Netflix, Google, and Amazon, right? Was that was it? Microsoft. So the, Microsoft used to be excluded. I think it was Fang. Facebook, Apple, Amazon, Netflix, and Google, Fang. And now they're adding Microsoft. So you take away the... Fainum, Fainum stocks, Facebook, Apple, Alphabet, Amazon, Netflix, and Microsoft. The S&P 500 uh, has only returned 10% uh, since uh, 2015, where the rest of the world, the Morgan Stanley Capital Index, let's see, uh, Capital International, I forgot, but uh, that's uh, XUS, all countries. So this is the entirety of the world. So MSCI, AC, XUS has actually uh, had negative returns. So uh, we start with 100 in 2015. We're down about, what's that, 85 or something like that? So the dip, we had we've aver we had 12% up as the S&P 500 without those six. Literally 12%. The foreign stuff is down. You take those six, so, and uh, those six average three, uh, we're up three, you know, from 2015 to 2020, a tripling which is why the S&P 500 has dominated so much more for international. Um, <laughs> woo! You can't own individual stocks because if you miss, if you didn't have these six, you didn't make any money. Ah, man, is that, I, man, I don't, I just sit there and say, how can this continue? It can't continue. It just, there's no way it can keep continuing like that. Uh, fan stocks, phantom stocks are the difference in earnings per share difference. Uh, so what's this? Uh, here is the forecast earnings. Uh, we got so they're forecasting basically 180 of earnings for the uh, those six, and the for forecast is less than 100 earnings for the S&P 500 minus those six, and the Morgan Stanley CI MSCI all country XUS is less than 100 as well. Um, that's forecasted earnings. Hey, that's not forecast because I mean, that, okay, I don't get that. That's forecast. We're stopping right there. I, I'm not sure what that chart says because we're, we're forecasting in hindsight. I, I'm not sure what this is. So they're saying, I, I don't I don't think that's forecast. I'd say that's for, that was uh, real earnings, right? Wouldn't that not be forecasted, but real? So we got real earnings, I'm presuming. They went from 100 to 180, 80% growth in earnings where everything else was basically, well, I mean, other than the commie virus, everything else had uh, grown about eh, about 30% or so over five years. That's not so bad. Yeah, that's I don't like that. That's a little bit misleading. S&P 500 price and gold normalized. Uh, gold spot is, I'm not, I can't follow that one here. So we got it since 19, well, yeah, but you, what? Yeah, you start 1979. I'm not sure what this is. Is that the last gold price? The gold's not trading at 31.59, is it? Yeah, hold on. So the spot price of gold for now is 1700. What? 
Not sure what this is saying. S&P price and gold normalized. Yeah, I don't get this. That's an ounce five. I don't. I don't get what that is. Uh, no, so I'm not sure. Um, all right. Anyway, so there you go. So I just want to go back to this. You cannot miss those six stocks. If you miss those six stocks, you're doomed. Ah, that means I, I just, I tell myself, value is going to make a comeback. And when it does, I'll be glad I have it. But man alive, it was tough waiting. All right, we'll see you.